the temperature that is 7 Celsius lower than negative 3 should be negative 3 minus 7, which is negative 10. As for question 2, just key in your calculator. You should get your final results as 6. Question 3. Based on the list of number, a cube number should be 27. As for prime number parts, the possible candidate should be 87, 57, and 47. However, both 87 and 57 can be divided by 3. Hence, your final result should be 47 only. As for section 4, okay, find the HCF here. So after dividing it by 3 and 7, I cannot divide by the same factor anymore. Hence, 3 times 7 should be 21. Question 5, writing it in standard form. 72,000 can be written as 7.2 times 10 to the power of 4 because it was being shifted to the left by 4 times. Okay, as for section B, it can be written as 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 3 because I shifted it towards the right hand by 3 steps. As for question 6, so you are going to take the x multiplied by x plus 5 and the 3 multiplied by x plus 5. So your final answer after the rearrangement should be x squared plus 8x plus 15. Question 17. Okay. Find the gradient of the line that's perpendicular to the line 2y equals to 3 plus 5x. So first you are required to arrange the equation given, which is the original line, into y equals to mx plus c. Okay, so I rearrange it and I gotten my gradient as 5 over 2. So gradient of the original line multiplied by gradient of the perpendicular line should be negative 1. So the gradient of the perpendicular line should be negative 2 over 5. As for question 8, acute angle x, okay, acute angle indicates that it is less than 90. So x equals to sine inverse of 0 0.36, which is 21.1 after correcting it to three significant figures. As for obtuse angle, okay, simply takes 180 minus the 21.1 results that we got in earlier. It should be 159 after correcting it to three significant figures. Question 9. Work out the surface area of this cuboid. So I drew down the shape to illustrate. Okay, there's two rectangles for the top and the bottom. And there is two rectangles as well for the front and the back. And two rectangles for the left and right. So 2 times 5 times 9.5 plus 2 times 7 times 9.5 and 2 times 7 times 5. Your final result should be 298 after the calculation. For question 10, 5n is the mean of 3 numbers. 391 n n n plus 1. So 391 plus n plus n minus 1 over 3 equals to 5 n. After the calculation, you should get your n equals to 30. As for question 11 part A, factorize this. So you need to extract 3 from both of the variables. Then you will get a balance of 4x plus 5. As for next one, I extracted x from the first two variables. I left a balance of y minus 2. And I extracted 3 from the remaining variables. I get a balance of y minus 2 as well. So since y minus 2 is repeating, I put them at the front and I multiply with the balance of x plus 3. So if you couldn't understand this, I've written down another format where you can digest it better so this is how it looks like question 12 
okay using the recorded length calculation formula you should get your results as 7.62 after correcting your answer to three significant figures as for question 13 okay based on the coordinates given okay run the calculation of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals to 2 cross multiply it and you will get your ks 11 over 4 as for question 14 okay this one is actually an arithmetic sequence because the difference in the denominator section is the same, which is plus 2 for every term. So the zero term here is 1 over 2 minus 2, which is 0. Okay, so combine your common difference with n, add in or minus your zero term, you should get your results as 1 over 2n. As for the next part, there's no clear indication of whether it is arithmetic or geometric. So for this type, you are required to list it down like the following format, 1, 5, 25. Okay, the result is 1 when n is 1, the result is 5 when n is 2, and the result is 25 when n equals to 3. So 1 can be written as 5 to the power of 0, 5 is actually 5 to the power of 1, and 25 is actually 5 to the power of 2. Based on this, I can relate that the n term sequence could be 5 to the power of n minus 1. So for question 15, okay, I run the calculation on 1 over 4 times 2 over 3 first. I get a balance of 1 over 6. So from there, I change their denominator into the same, which is multiplying 2 into the numerator and denominator of the first fraction. Then I will get my final results as 5 over 6. As for question 16, write down his time for 100 meter race. So when it is having a jump of 15.12. So from 15.12, I trace it back. The 100 meter time rate should be 12.88. Plot these two points down, okay, and draw down the lines of best fit. So your line of best fit might not be the same as mine, but as long as your variables there is next to the line you've drawn, you should be okay. What type of correlation this scattered diagram show? This is actually a negative correlated scattered diagram because the higher the time required for you to complete 100 meter run, the lower your results in triple jump. For question 17, so I break down the inequalities at the bottom as negative 2 less than x, which translates to x more than negative 2, and x less than equals to 3. And the last equation there will be y less than equals to x plus 3. So as per usual, I first draw down the line x less than equals to 3 and x more than negative 2. Okay, do take note that for the line x more than equals to 2, it should be a dotted line. So based on these two, it's referring to the center rectangle over there. I then proceed to draw the y less than equals to x plus 3. So when x equals to 0 and x equals to negative 3, I get my coordinates of y as 3 and 0. Okay, I then draw down the solid line because it is a less than equals to. Okay, then the part they are referring to is actually towards the bottom. So I shade off the rest and I leave a trapezoid shape over there as our region. As for question 18, numbers of elements in M should be 2, 3, 4, 5, which is a total of 4. And write down a set where set N is a subset of M. Okay, so it can be any of the combination that are listed over there. Okay, but it doesn't have the entire set, which is 2, 3, 4, 5, else it would be qualified as a proper subset instead. For 
for section B, okay, A union with B and everything other than it, which refer to everything other than A union B. So this should be the part that you should require the shade of. As for next one, I always like to split them up, okay. And since the symbol, the center is a union sign, so I basically put all the part that I shade together. So C intersect with everything other than D. So this part is the one that they wanted. And the E is as above. So add them both up. The final result should be this. Question 19. Calculate the deceleration of the car during the first 20 seconds. So I have two coordinates here, which is 0, 16 and 20, 10. By substituting it to the gradient formula, you should get your results as negative 0 0.3. However, since the question mentioned about the acceleration already, we just put in 0 0.3 as your final results. As for section B, the total distance for the car during the first 70 seconds. Okay, this one is referring to the area of this particular shape. So I basically split this into a trapezium and a rectangle alternatively you can split it into one big rectangle with a triangle okay after the calculation you should get 760 as your final result as for question 20 keyword here is inversely proportional and the keyword square so t equals to k over x plus 1 square Substituting 5 and 2 into it, you should get your k as 45. So your t final results equals to 45 over x plus 1 squared. As for question 21, okay, this is actually a matrix question. However, for syllabus that is 2020 and onwards, it was being removed. So, uh, I won't be explaining this, but the details and the workings has been included. You can just refer to it and get the respective answer. Question 22. Okay, I would say this is pretty tricky. So you need to do some groundwork, which is to calculate the capacity of the cone at the top by taking 1 over 3 times pi times 5 squared times 4.8, which is 40 pi, and the volume of the water by calculating the cylinder base, okay, by taking pi times r squared times h, which is 300 pi. So you're required to identify your new depth here. So pi times r squared times h equals to 300 pi minus 40 pi. The reason why I do that is that the water flow down from the cylinder to the cone already. So I need to minus it off, then I can know the exact value. So h is now 10.4, okay? However, this 10.4 will not be the final answer, okay? Because it is for the cylinder part only so you still need to know the height of the cone which was given by the question which is 4.8 so your new depth here should be 10.4 plus 4.8 which is 15.2 the last question question 23 write down the model class the model class is the part where it has the highest frequency count, which is t less than equals to 15 and t more than 10. As for section B, complete the histogram. Okay, Frequency density is actually taking frequency divided by the class interval. So as per usual, I will do my ground check to check whether there is a scale factor involvement or not. So you take 7 divided by 10, you should get 0 0.7. So this results hints us that there's no skill factor involvement. So you just proceed with the calculation. You should get 3.8, 3.2 and 0 0.4 respectively. Then you can proceed and complete the following histogram. So this is pretty much it for this paper 23. 
If you have friends that are struggling to solve this, feel free to share this video to them and I wish you all the best in your upcoming examination. Thank you.